Howdy, I'm back. This is Mr. Pete, and this is part five of the video series on building the Mighty Vice Float Lock Vice AMF. Let's get started. In this chapter, I'd like to drill the hole right here that will hold the guide rod in place and then make this spacer which goes on here which also means I need to shorten this uh, threaded rod just a little bit and turn the end down something like this. Now in regards to this threaded rod here I would much have preferred if I could have acquired threaded rod that was not plated. I really don't like that look at all but it's certainly better than this garbled up piece that I had in my scrap bin. So that is a fresh piece. You really can't buy that. Maybe from McMaster Car, but you can't buy it at your local box store, but you can't buy anything obscure at a local box store. You know, I really don't know what level of detail to give. Some people say, give me more detail. Some say, cut the detail and make it short, because I'm only getting an average of eight minutes of view per video. So that's why I'm trying to present these in shorter chapters. But observant viewers also notice that I have a, a, a vice right here. That's to keep the rod from shifting on me as I drill. So it's, it's little things like that you want to, and be careful you don't break off your eighth inch drill bit. You will be so discouraged you'll go upstairs and you'll never work again in a shop. Also note that there's a little witness mark there toward the top because more than likely this could not be assembled in uh, 180 degrees and that'll take an eighth inch roll pin, spring pin, drive pin, whatever you call them. But I'm temporarily just using a piece of eighth inch filler rod so I can take it in and out at will. Some viewers ask what I use to remove layout dye. And my favorite and the cheapest is brake cleaner. And now to cut off the threaded rod, and it's not easy to put a layout mark on a thread. It probably, yeah, it does show up in the video. So I'm going to cut that off now. Okay, the screw is cut off to the correct length, but now I have to turn it down, and that'll be 3 8 diameter, and approximately, well, this piece is a quarter inch thick, and I'm going to make mine a little bit thicker. In fact, this is the material that I'm going to make mine out of. Why? Because th that's pretty thin, to drill an eighth inch hole through. So I'd rather have the luxury of a little bit thicker piece. Therefore I'm still going to turn it down to three inch diameter but just a little bit longer than what this is and that is uh, not quite three eighths. I think I'll make mine uh, about seven sixteenths. I'm going to turn that on the lathe and I will not show that. I changed my mind. I think I'll show a little of this. I just went up and had a sandwich and opened the mail and a little envelope just came and it's from Shars and of all things some Shars stickers and a, a pen but coincidentally, earlier this morning, I got an email, and it was a scathing email, chewing me up and down for advertising. And, you know, I guess he never watched NASCAR, but it, I am so thankful that I have some uh, sponsors, and for the many people that have given me things, and mostly to you people that are out there and watching my video, so thank you. Be sure and measure twice and cut once. So before I turn this down, I thought, well, I'll just double check this. And of all things, this is 
2364 so I told you 3 8 which is a uh, uh, 357 like the magnum I keep in my bedside table so I will drill that hole as such but so now I need to make one of these and you can see that that will fit but again I said I was going to make mine just a little thicker let me lay that out okay let's lay this thing out and this is 516 stock I don't know why that's marked I sure didn't do it but this piece is one and five eighths long spacer I guess I'll call that a, for lack of a better name I like these nice scribers from Randy Richard in the shop all right let's have a center line and the first hole is 5 sixteenths from the end and remember the two holes are 5 sixteenths apart do you recall that not 5 sixteenths 15 sixteenths 15 sixteenths and I will center punch those two only 30 seconds ago did I realize I have two of these little sterret dividers they're so elegant I believe they call that the Fay pattern F-A-Y maybe F-A-Y-E anyway who cares but uh, this is 5 eighths across here which is a 5 sixteenths radius this is 3 quarter which is a 3 eighths radius I've already set the two now there's a lot of different ways you could lay this out I could just have transferred it off of this but that wouldn't help you because you do not have one of those at home are my fingers in the way I hope not There's a certain amount of pleasure involved with a layout such as this. What possible pleasure could you derive, you're thinking? And I want to draw two lines that are tangent to the circles. Not critical. Not important. Same thing over here. There's a little wiggle room here, but yet I do not want to influence it, so the dimension there, 15 16 is fairly important, but I'm just going to hand drill those. That could certainly be done on the digital readout, but I think that would be overkill. So I'm going to go over and drill the two holes off camera. This one, of course, is half inch, and this one was, what was that crazy dimension uh, right there, 23 64s. See you in a minute. Guess what? I used the Peterson Products vise to drill those two holes, so that's another debut. You might have seen me acquire this at a recent auction. So there the two holes are. Let me wipe that off. Now I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and rough that out. I'm not going to cut it off. This is the perfect handle because I am going to then abrasive sand it down to the lines. Stick with me. Well, there it is so far. Again, I got a handle to hang on to, and over to the abrasive machine we go. That's about as far as I can take it on the big belt sander because I cannot get into this uh, more uh, intricate little area here. 
So I'm going to cut it off now and then I'll finish up by hand, but it's going to be a finger burner. Over the years I've got quite a space in there and I do not like work to all of a sudden slip up like that and try to get pulled down. Maybe not with work this thick, but I like to put a block of wood against there and again this will be a finger burner so I have to cool it off in, in water. i got a can of water here and I won't show all that, but this is the general idea of how I will finish it off. You know what? That's an awful lot of work for a little piece like that, isn't it? How did they do it? Well, it was simply stamped out on a punch press. You can see the marks. Let's see if it fits. And it does. So, all I need to do now is lay out that eighth inch hole there, which I will do off camera and drill the eighth inch hole all the way through. But again, I'll put a temporary pin in there. Looks pretty good. And bingo! Okay, what's next? Well, next is the crank handle, and this is the original, of course. But I want to tackle strictly this. That's my mock, not mock up, uh, my sample that I made a few weeks ago. So I'm going to go ahead and make it up just like that. Probably a little bit shorter here. Fairly difficult part because we've got a straight, we've got a taper, we've got. Uh, Got it thinned out here on the milling machine. Just a lot of different operations on this. Now if that scares you, or if you don't want to mess with that, and then of course we have to bend it. Go ahead and make a handle similar to this, because those are so easy to make. But I am going to go on the higher road, so let's begin. And I almost forgot to mention that this part here is a separate part, and that also requires a radius here so that'll all be covered in the following video or the following two videos. This is 5-8 stock. So both this piece and this piece are made of 5-8 round. Here's how I'm going to approach this. This first line is three quarters of an inch in from the faced end and then the second line is 7-8. And I'm just going to plunge cut using this tool, whatever angle that produces, back and forth, back and forth, taking it down to 5 16 diameter, and that is this diameter right here. Okay, it's taken down to 5 16 diameter, and it looks like a dog bone. I'm ready for the next step. Now look at the setup. I'm going to make a 7 degree taper with the compound rest. I will have the carriage locked when I begin. Let me move the camera and show you the work. I have moved the work out a little bit. I've marked it. Right here is 1 and 1 eighth from this shoulder here. Disregard this mark. Again, compound 7 degrees. And make sure you have enough travel with your compound. And the idea here is we're going to try to turn a taper where the taper begins where the shoulder leaves off and ends here at my 1 and 1 eighth mark. And your compound has to be set pretty accurately and that's the reason I made a prototype of this.
This is just a little bit too long, so I'm as is this, so I'm going to face it off. You see a mark there, so it's 5 eighths long. Now I'm going to put three decorative little grooves in there like this. I should have done that earlier well, uh, when I had more rigidity. This is kind of risky with so much hanging out. It may not work. So far so good and I have not cut it off yet but now I need to and I'm not going by any dimensions other than my sample there will be dimensions on the finished drawing but between that point that sure doesn't show up and about this point I'm going to take it over to the mill and mill it on both sides to that thickness and I'm going to hold that in a collet block and then the final operation will be to make the bend but We'll do all that tomorrow in the next part. I think that's enough fun for today. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.